Janet from the Ed and Janet Show, and um, we're here at George and April's That's right. Garden today. That's right. Uh, thank you so much for having us. And, thank you uh, for having me. Relatively new gardener, and you've set up a wonderful vegetable garden with the help of a friend of Ed's. Mr. Uh, Bill Morgan. Bill Morgan, the Geritol gardener, who I think will be taping at another time his wonderful garden, too. It's pretty so, interesting, and uh, he's an extremely knowledgeable guy. Yes. Yeah, so and so I've learned well. oh, immensely, yeah. immensely. And he tends to do that because he's a nice man. So He volunteers a lot of his time and uh, his, um, his expertise. I am very, very lucky to have had him to help me set it up. Uh, I, I suffered injuries uh, at work and uh, I'm, you know, quite uh, disabled with uh, my right uh, shoulder. And uh, he's been here to help me. He's brought uh, the Dan, uh, Danny Carson to come oh, yeah. over and give me a hand. So. I was lucky to have them, and we got this set up. The, the setup we have here, within six months, we were ready to go. Right. You know. Excellent. Well, please start showing showing us. The well, okay. Well, we'll go in the order. Let's go in the order we set up the gardens, okay. right? Okay. And I'm the B-roll today, folks. So the first the first garden we set up was this one here. Um, These are uh, golden raspberries, and it's their first year, but we're, we're going to have a harvest, but a small harvest, um, and uh, we've put in a few other things in it, uh, just to take as much advantage of the, of the, the, the ground as possible, so I've got some, um, uh, my son-in-law calls them the little green balls of death, but uh, <laughs> they're uh, Brussels sprouts, <laughs> and we've got some strawberries in here. Hey, Jen. Why don't you try this? See, see what you think. What kind are they? Do you know? Oh, they're Everlast. Or... All right. So um, the next thing that we did is we, we'd had a, a few uh, containers of asparagus, oh, yeah. and they weren't producing just yet. They were uh, in their second year. And so this year, for the third year, we decided to transplant them in one of those large pots. And the reason why we decided to put them in the pots is that if you don't confine them, they'll grow all over the place. And so, because they had a lot more room this year, we got to eat some uh, asparagus. I'll let you try it uh, in a minute. Or maybe, Janet, would you do the honors? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> so this year we had uh, enough for, for a few a few feed. But uh, I'll be quite honest with you, none of them, for any great measures, made it into the house. <laughs> Every time we'd walk by, we'd grab one and eat it right there. Those things are delicious. Yes. <laughs> Then we set up our blueberry uh, uh, trees here, and uh, we weren't expecting, uh, you know, nothing special from the blueberry trees this year, but as it turns out, we're going to have a decent little crop. Uh, I've discovered that blueberries like an acidic soil, and I make my own yogurt. And so I used the whey. The minute I put the whey in there, the, the berries came out. You know, uh, it's a it's an excellent fertilizer. I've nursed my uh, one of my pumpkins back to life with uh, with whey. Believe it or not, you know that I mix uh, three to one, one cup of of whey. It has to be acidic whey uh, because there's two types of whey. Uh, acidic whey is the the result of making yogurts, and sweet whey is usually once you when you use rennet to make cheese, it makes it sweet you know but given that uh, blueberries like acidic soil we've opted to uh, start using our way in there in our coffee grounds you know and uh, lucky enough we've got we're gonna have beautiful berries this year you know the birds don't get them <laughs> this is uh, my wife's lipstick tree um, it uh, keeps coming back every year it looks like heck in the, in the in the spring beginning of the summer it comes springs to life and um, and speaking of my wife, there she is, my beautiful April. We, we call it lipstick. We call it lipstick. We, exactly. <laughs> we don't Plan. know what it is. The Salvia member, and it's called Hot Lips. And it's not MASH related. <laughs> So next thing, uh, we started setting up those uh, uh, other beds over there. I don't know what's going on with this. Uh, I think all the rain we had recently might have uh, overwatered it, but still, it's producing nice uh, little cherry tomatoes. Uh, there's a few that are 
it's going to be ready to eat within the week. So, and we're see if we can nurse it back to health, you know, by controlling how much water uh, it's receiving. Um, so this was a uh, closed bed. We started uh, planting in this bed uh, in uh, in February. Uh, Bill came over and we put in our peas, our first uh, crop of peas. And uh, as I say, it was closed in with with uh, sort of a plastic that kept the heat in. And uh, uh, so the, the peas are done. They, they We've eaten them all. At one point, we decided we couldn't. They were so dense. Uh, we, we couldn't get in there to harvest them. So we decided to pull the plants. And what we've done is we've, uh, we've blanched them, froze them on cookie sheets. They're all in the freezer. We have about 15 pounds of them. So we're going to have all sorts of good stuff for the for the winter you know uh yesterday april got up uh, at six and she came and woke me up she says well if we're gonna film we need to pull the the cauliflower out <laughs> you know we the, the cauliflower heads were like they were ridiculously large and uh so we decided to pull them out so we've got a i'd say 15 20 pounds of uh in in fro and i'll show you later i'll go get a bag uh, of uh, cauliflower that's been blanched and frozen for the winter so it gives us an option of having a, a different crop for the third crop so this is the second crop we've got here uh, it's called uh, Caraflex uh, um, uh, cabbage it's delicious it's it's a little different than your, your the average carb cabbage that you buy at the grocery store it seems to be a little sweeter and they get bigger and uh, oftentimes they, they will sprout a a side shoot but <laughs> it'll give you another little cabbage but uh, get ready because if you harvest one you better be prepared to eat a lot of soup and <laughs> make a lot of coleslaws and, and whatnot um, these are my indeterminate tomatoes uh, we've put those in the ground after we uh, after the first uh, harvest was over so those have been in the ground probably two three weeks now and some of them have tomatoes on them if you look over here uh, nicely oh, there was a little tomato there it's gone <laughs> um, I've got eggplant that I put in so that will be later uh, you know in, uh, in August uh, here I got my pepper plants and they, they have little peppers in them there I got uh, three different varieties the average that you would find at the grocery store you know green red and, and yellow same thing every year what I do is I chop them up and I put them in bags of you know I, I'm the cook in my family so what I do is I I know in the average recipe you would use say a cup of this and I put it in bags so that I just go in my freezer grab what I need if I'm making a spaghetti sauce or I'm making some some chilies or whatever I'm making I, I like to go to my freezer and get, get what I need and I purposely portion it so that it's easy you know so easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the point. Eh? Like, there's no need to blanch them. Uh, you're using them for the flavor. They, they you're not using them really for the look. Uh, in in a, you know, it's, they're, you're, they're not part of the presentation in a plate when you're cooking. Right? They're part. They're, they're part of your flavor profile. So it's easy to just put them in the bag and off you go. Chop them up. Put them in the bag. You know. Here I've got some uh, some kohlrabi. This one. Uh, this one's ready. So it's going to be harvested uh, sometime this week. It's it's quite large. Ed, uh, not, uh, not Ed, but Bill was remarking when he first arrived today. He says, at the store, they're about this big. This, this thing is ginormous. <laughs> That's the beauty. When you grow your own, you let them go until you, you know, dodge, dodge, get out of the garden. This dog is a cruciferous dog. He loves everything cruciferous. <laughs> he comes and helps himself in the garden, which is fine. You know, there's enough for everybody. <laughs> Over here, I've got uh, some um, zucchini. I've got some cucumbers. I've got a Lady Godiva pumpkin that I had to nurse back to, uh, to health. She was having a heck of a time, but uh, as it turns out, uh, she loves uh, 
uh, whey. We, we gave, them, gave it some whey, uh, and uh, all of a sudden it sprung back, and now it's rallying. It's, uh, so we're hoping to get some, some nice seeds, you know, to flavor our salads or whatever. And from what I understand, uh, you would get about, uh, out of a Lady Godiva, maybe 10 to 15, between 10 and 15 fruit and uh, they will lead, uh, yield about a pound of seeds, you know, so uh, there'll be enough for everybody, you know, <laughs> if, if they all come to fruition. So Ed, um, this is a, a spinach patch. This is the, the second uh, um, sowing. The first sowing was Thai uh, spinach. We harvested, I would say, five and, or six times. We had a feed five or six times, but... Um, uh, eventually, the plant, the plant, the plant bolts, and it, it, you know, it comes to the end of its uh, of its life. As you know, um, uh, spinach is a super heavy feeder, so that's probably you know what happened uh, in the end. You know, they, they, uh, the soil was um, depleted. So, anyways, uh, when we got to the end, we pulled those out and uh, we've planted this variety. And this this variety is different. It's um, it's. It's oh, it's tai, it's spin tai, it's tai also. I was, and uh, but with all the rain we've had recently, it's ha it's had a hard time getting uh, established. But it's as you can tell, it's starting to now. We've amended the soil immensely by uh, adding uh, uh, manure, chicken manure, aged chicken manure. Very important, unless you want to pick some weeds out of your uh, out of your vegetable. And uh, here we've got some. Uh, some uh, chives. chives, some garlic chive, and some ordinary chive. I've picked all the flowers off of them, and I, they're in my freezer. So that when I when you know when I want to present a nice plate, I just put a little bit of those uh, those nice purple flowers. They're delicious, you know. So. So that's about it for this. Oh, this has got uh, a little bit of mint in it. This has probably been uh, uh, sown from the, the plant that I had there, just pollinated, you know, through the wind or something. This is my, my second crop of peas. Um, uh, again, uh, my friend uh, Bill Morgan uh, is mentoring me and uh, uh, he's, he's advised me to have a second uh, feeding of, uh, or a second planting of, of peas. These things took off, uh, like they, they, they almost came in at the same time as the other ones, but the other ones we put in in, in in February, right? So these got a little more heat. But as you can tell, uh, we're about a week away. They're starting to get fat and delicious. Uh, maybe somebody should have a taste here. You know. Oh, you know who that's going to be. I have a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, over here, and uh, I'll just uh, pull the netting off because uh, there's cruciferous in there, and uh, I don't think that the, the cabbage moth can can really affect them anymore because it's the, the fruit is uh, is getting large enough. Um, I had uh, Napa cabbage in here, and it was doing really really well. So I've learned that uh, they don't like to have too much heat or too much light. To be very honest with you, because the minute they, they started getting more light, but they bolted. So I haven't pulled them out yet, but it's unfortunate because they were doing really, really well. I have some Swiss chard here that we've been harvesting now for at least a month. It's good stuff. And uh, over here, I have some... Uh, um, that's a cauliflower. It's starting to form a head, and uh, I have some uh, some more kohlrabi. I try to take advantage of you know every little spot that I can put something in, and uh, I think we're saving some money in the end. You know, but one thing's for certain is that these vegetables don't taste anything like what you buy at the, at the market. You, you control everything, and everything here is grown organically. You know, we're using uh, organic. Uh, chicken manure where uh, we amend our soil and the thing is is that uh, one way of amending our soils is like when you're growing peas or beans you know that you're putting the peas uh, the peas and beans put nitrogen back into the soil so our soil is amended for the next crop you know you're already ready so um, 
here we have some some broccoli that uh, we need to start har harvesting and uh, we're probably going to do that this week and um, you know there's only so much broccoli you can eat in one week so what i do same thing i um, i blanch it for 45 seconds salt uh, and salt you know heavy roll uh, boiling roll uh, rolling boil rather and uh, in a, an ice bath and then I laid on cookie sheets in my freezers and and we eat it all year you know use it in soups but when you do it like that you're doing it exactly like you would buy it from the frozen uh, uh, food section you know it's it's as fresh as it comes basically you know it's out of the garden into boiling water into the freezer into a bag you know so everything's there all the vitamins are conserved the minerals so as I say for us April and I we've been doing this now for for five years but we're getting much better results with this because we, we have even more control over what's uh, what's going in the soil and um, when we can start earlier so this year we're gonna have three crops easily you know and I don't know if you've noticed Jan but in here it's hot right and it's like a micro uh, climate that we have we're lucky that we have that and things take off at a great rate of knots and all of a sudden we have beautiful vegetables over here I have some carrots. Um, I have not had a lot of success with my carrots. I blame Bill. Uh, he's got too much success with his. <laughs> so it gives me an excuse to go say hello and uh, go steal some carrots. Um, well, I think that the, the, my, uh, my seeds might have been a little bit old, you know. And at the end here, I have some nice icicle... Uh, um, Radishes. I know that Janet's gonna want want to have have one of those. <laughs> there. Save that bread. there you go. <laughs> Here I have um, I have two types of onions. Uh, as I've mentioned earlier, I, I like to cook, and uh, I think it's abundantly clear that I have some success. <laughs> Um, so I've got uh, lobo onions and Kelsey onions. One of the things that's interesting, and I've learned that from my friend Bill, uh, I, I'm not that smart. Bill, Bill uh, Morgan told me about it. So now we've reached the, um, the, uh, the summer solstice yesterday. And what's interesting with onions is that the, 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 the green tops, they're going to die off. They're going to start to die off, and all the energy is going to go into the bulb and start growing bigger and bigger bulbs. And uh, this variety of onions uh, are basically, on average, five, sometimes six, seven pounds even, you know. So uh, once again, you know, you crack one of those onions, be hungry or have a plan. <laughs> Make, onion <soup. laughs> Make onion soup and, uh, you know, I like onion soup. Um, over here, I have some um, some leeks. They went in on the ninth of uh, all of the onions uh, went in on the ninth of uh, February, and so the leeks will be ready to harvest. Uh, I would say in two weeks from now, and uh, we're we're gonna let the soil rest, amend it, and get it ready for for the next crop, which. And uh, I, I, I suspect this bed's going to be uh, uh, probably, um, what do you call them, um, um, either broccoli or uh, Brussels sprouts. I like Brussels sprouts. They're delicious. Again, you know, a little bit of Brussels sprout has more uh, vitamin C than uh, uh, an orange, for God's sake. So um, these are... Um, um, uh, I'm, fennel, yeah, I'm, I was drawing a blank. Thanks for your help there. Um, and this is the second crop. We've, we've already eaten the first crop, and I've got one or two balls that are left. This one's enormous. Um, they, I, I like it. I use it. I make soups. Uh, I make a uh, soup uh, sort of uh, uh, or a fish uh, bouillabaisse, basically. And uh, I use a lot of that in the bouillabaisse. It gives it a nice little uh, licorice taste, you know. Um, so these are French shallots. And uh, they're, they're about ready, just about ready to start using. But as I'm removing French shallots, I'm putting in beets so that, you know, maximize uh, the, the, the season, basically. 
uh, have a few uh, uh, radishes that are growing here. And these are uh, multiplier on, uh, green onions, but I'm, I'm letting them go so that I have multipliers for next year, right? I'm gonna let them go to seed. Over there, in, uh, in the cages there, I have my uh, bush tomatoes, and they're starting to produce some tomatoes. Uh, there's tomatoes on them, and uh, um, I've, uh, I've learned uh, that they do, they, 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 they do well. You don't have to uh, take the suckers off of the bush tomatoes. This is something, I, you know, once again, that my friend Bill taught me. Uh, you know, if I get to live as old as him, uh, I might be a pretty decent gardener. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, and then there's the back garden here. Okay, so uh, this was um, uh, basically the third uh, bed that we put in. And I said to uh, Bill, I said, I want to put in a four, uh, four foot bed here. I want to take advantage of, you know, because th this is getting a lot of sun. And uh, th so we can produce a lot of stuff. And this year, as it turns out, it's mostly beans. I've got uh, several variety of beans in here. I've got broad beans. I don't know if you can see them, but uh, they're a couple of weeks from uh, harvesting. Uh, for those of us who've had broad bean soup, hmm, uh, it's absolutely delicious. I've got some uh, some um, my chosen kale in here. I'm trying, you know, I'm fighting with it. I, there's only so much kale a person can eat, and this th it loves the bed. It just grows like wildfire in there. So, uh, uh, and I want these. Uh, these are uh, Fortex beans here. These are yellow beans. I have some purple beans uh, and then some green beans. And on the back there, uh, this is for my legumes. Uh, uh, I'm going to use those mostly uh, for for making uh, hummuses or, or uh, you know, if I make a, uh, a chili during the winter, I'm going to use the, the red scarlets as a legume. So I'm going to let them, uh, leave them on the vine, cut the vine off, let them dry in the sun for a couple of weeks and then I'll, 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 I'll uh, pod them and uh, put them into bags. Last year I got about five pounds of, uh, uh, of beans but I've got a lot more this year so you know that's going to be good. I've, again here I have some, some, uh, some broccoli uh, and in this bed I'm just going to harvest the heads process them and continue to eat the shoots that come up you know for the rest of the summer and uh, there's my pride and joy my lady godiva <laughs> it was uh, it was a stressful affair to, uh, to, to to try to nurse her to, to health and uh, you know it was, it was having a real hard time at first and um, uh, I suspect I wasn't watering enough at first you know and uh, then I started watering it. It looked like it was rallying, but the minute I put the, the whey on it, boom, it turned it right around, you know. And back there, I have white beans. Again, I'm using beans over there to amend the soil for the next, uh, the next crop, you know. Um, and I have some cucumbers. I have apple cucumbers. I have lemon cucumbers, English cucumbers. And uh, I have some butternut squash and uh, an acorn squash. And that's about it for my garden. Well, thank you very much, George. Um, I think you have a fabulous garden here, and uh, you've done a really great job. I'm really Thanks proud so of it, for, but I've had a lot of help. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I love all your points about uh, what, you, what you're what you going to do with it and how you use them. And There's one thing I need to say. I, I want everybody to know that my starts, okay, were all produced by Bill Morgan. Yes. Um, I, I, want, I have a small uh, little uh, greenhouse that I put together, you know, in the spring. But this year, Bill said, you know what, George, I love doing that. And do me the honor of letting me uh, get all your starts uh, done. And so... You know, I had all my uh, seeds, I brought them over, and uh, lo and behold, uh, I've been spoiled. You know, it's been an easy year for me this year. And years before that, uh, like I've only had my... Um 
in my uh, greenhouse for uh, two years now, I used to buy my plants, and it's I gotta tell you, it's expensive to buy, yes. you know. Yeah. So uh, accolades, you know, and big thank yous to Bill because uh, he saved me a lot of money, and and he's a really cool guy. Yeah, we're, <laughs> no, we're going to his place next, and also I think it's important to save seeds. So uh, get some tips from him if you're not used to doing that, because uh, I know this year was a tough one for us gardeners. There's things that I have not been able to grow because I wasn't able to get seeds because there was a limited supply because because of what's going on worldwide a lot of people are starting to garden so i think seed saving is a good thing to do too so you know this pandemic may, might, might have a very positive effect uh, in, in a sense yeah. you know uh, people are going to learn that uh, food doesn't come from safeway yeah. it comes from the ground you more know people are gardening and more people are learning how to cook i've heard that story too so no, I, I wish I, I didn't know my way around the table <laughs> or, or the, the stove so well i probably wouldn't be carrying an extra 50 yeah. pounds oh it's all good thank you so much. You're very welcome, and really thanks for coming. It. It's nice meeting you. All right, take care.